Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the CITN, I hereby present to you the 10th president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Please put your hands together for Mr. John Femi Sunday Jagade, FCTI. I'm sure you can do better, please. Put your hands together. Standing ovation, please. While standing, please put your hands together. He's the only one that is permitted to sit. With those historic words, Mr. John Femi Sunday Jagede, GFS, was ushered in as the 10th president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN. And with those words, we welcome you to today's episode of Tax Matters. I am Olumu Iwa Matuluko. When Tax Matters, the program, started in the year 2000, Mr. GFS Jagede was the registrar and chief executive officer of the CITN at their secretariat in Lupeju in Lagos. Now, if you know that that was a paid employment, you will appreciate the hard work and diligence that must have gone into this climb up the ladder of success. It's very much like somebody working as a staff at the presidential villa in Nasorok in Abuja, surfacing a decade or two after as the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria. We wish Mr. Jagede the best during this his tenure. Date was Thursday, August 18, 2011, and venue was a restaurant in Victoria Island in Lagos. In attendance were movers and shakers of the society and the professions. The special guest of honor was the governor of Mr. Jegede's home state, Ekiti State, Dr. Kayo De Fayemi, while the guest speaker was erudite lawyer and president West African Bar Association, Mr. Femi Falano. All the way from Abuja came a powerful delegation of two coordinating directors of the FIRS, in the persons of Mr. Osi Chuke and Mr. Onyekachi Ihedioa, representing the executive chairman of the FRS, Mrs. Ifeko Mogui Okaru. At the beginning of it all, Mr. Jagede's credentials were laid on the table for all. At the Institute, GFS is somebody that will be referred to in civil service panels as having risen through the ranks and paid his dues. When he was admitted as associate member of the Nigeria Institute of Taxation in 1991, little did he know that one day he will be at the end of affairs as the number one man. He has served the institute in numerous capacities, from member of committees to chairman of committees, and eventually became the fifth registrar of the institute in 1998. It is on record that is the first among equals at the first past RCE to have attained the height of also being the president of any institute in Nigeria. And when the time came for the citation, the quintessential Mr. GFS Jagede was further unveiled. He also attended the Polytechnic Ibano and Limerick College of Technology, far away in Ireland. He is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, and Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. Mr. Jagede worked at various times, first as a banker. He also worked at Patrick McNamara, and Associates Ireland. He also worked with Akitola Williams, Deloitte, Chartered Accountants, Mr. Femi Jagede. He's currently the Director of Finance and Accounts, FA of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Mr. Jagede has rendered invaluable services, services to public and private organizations. He's a member of the Executive Committee of Council he was at a time chairman, education committee of council of the CITN. At a time, he was chairman, project committee. Also, he was the chairman, investigation panel, chairman, finance and general purposes committee. At another time, he was the deputy as well as the vice president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation before his recent elevation 
to the position of president and chairman of council of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Far away in Africa, Mr. Jagede is the first president of Association of African Tax Institutes, AATI, which has its headquarters in Accra, Ghana. He's the first Nigerian to assume both positions at the same time, simultaneously. A highly elated Governor Fayemi pledged the support of himself and the government of Ekiti State to the homeboy. The reason why I'm here in solidarity uh, with uh, Mr. Jagede on today's investiture is to bring, not just to him, but to other professional members of the Institute and all lovers of everything that is good, that we in the Kitty always want to be associated with excellence and not mediocrity. We know uh, that this is a professional body that is dedicated to the core values of excellence, of professionalism, of hard work, and of delivering the goods. The goods these days in Nigeria, especially if you are a governor, is internally generated revenue. IGR is the swan song of every political and public office order. And there is no better place to learn the tricks of making more money for the people than in the hallowed company of tax practitioners and revenue professionals. For us, we would continue to support Mr. Jagede during his tenure and support this body uh, as best as we can. I am not unaware of the enormity of the challenges that he is likely to face in office. He's told me a few of the things he would like to achieve uh, during his tenure, not least the tax out we would do whatever we can out of our meager resources. We're not Lagos, but my brother's representative is here. So I'm sure uh, since the building is likely to be in Lagos, I'm assuming it's not going to be in the kitchen. President, is it? <laughs> since it's going to be in Lagos, I'm sure that my brother, Mr. Shojipo, would deliver the goods handsomely uh, on behalf of the governor of Lagos State. But we shan't be too far off behind him in our own support. The ninth president of the CITN and now president of the West African Union of Tax Institutes, Wauti, Prince Kule Kodri, was joined by other past presidents in attendance to formally decorate Mr. GFS Jegede as the 10th president of the CITN. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord continue to guide you and be with you and give you the guidance in the new post. In his acceptance speech, the brand new president, Mr. GFS Jagede, had this to say. During my tenure, much emphasis will be placed on technical output of the institute. The Institute will not only intensify its input into federal government annual budget, but will ensure it monitors its implementation, particularly as it has become obvious that internally generated revenue would be relied more to finance each. Same emphasis will be extended to states and local government in order to make the Institute relevant to all the tasks of government. As always, we count on the support of members and stakeholders to assist us in achieving our goal 
of constructing a defeating national secretariat for our noble institute. Let me use this opportunity to urge our president, President Goodluck Jonathan, GCFR, to as a matter of economic importance, sign into law the amended personal income tax bill sent to him by the National Assembly. Barrister Femi Falano delivered the guest lecture while the tenth president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Ghana delivered a goodwill message. In a chat with correspondent Tobilo Bakujore, the new CITM president shed further light on his plans for his two year tenure. Now, so what are your plans for your tenure? The plans, uh, briefly, for the tenure is first of all to complete the tax provider size, which we have started. Also, we will intensify our efforts to harmonize the existing relationship between Nigeria and the other uh, taxation institutes, not only in Africa, but all over the world. Currently now, we are a member of the International Tax Directors Forum. We are also a member of West African Union of Tax Institutes and Association of African Tax Institutes. So these areas will be strengthened. And as I've said before, we will continue to contribute to uh, debate on tax issues so that we can enthrone a viral tax system and tax regime in Africa, West Africa and Africa. What are your expectations for the government on taxation? The, what we expect, first and foremost, is for the president to sign into law the personal income tax amended bill before him. This is very important to ensure that taxpayers are fairly treated so that they can pay what they are expected to pay. And this in return will increase voluntary compliance. In a situation where tax rates and allowances are outdated, last reviewed in 1993, it does not give encouragement to taxpayers to comply because they were paying more than what they are expected to pay under normal circumstances. So we expect government to also give taxation a priority by creating the Office of Special Advisor on Revenue and Taxation in the Office of the President and in the case of the Governor to have similar things. And in the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly, we are recommending the creation